Um, maybe you will find one, maybe not. We'll see what the day will bring. A tarantula made of gold, hiding in plain sight. No silk at the entrance, no sign anything's home, just rock and dirt. Are we going to be successful searching for the Mexican golden red drum tarantula in these hillsides of Mexico? Join us on our adventure and find out. You can hear the road noises again. We are up on another field trip. Day two on searching tarantulas in the wild here in Mexico. So wish us luck. We are within the Brachypelma albiceps habitat. And uh, yeah, let's see what we find. Nobody tells you about this part, like the hours before the discovery, when you're not sure there will be any discovery at all. The sun is brutal out here in the Guerrero Highlands, and the terrain fights you every step of the way. Thorns catch your sleeves, loose rocks shift under your boots. The brush is so dense in places that you can't see where you're putting your feet. And we've been checking burrows since days, and the holes we find belong to anything rodents, beetles, snakes, or nothing at all. Brachypelma don't advertise themselves. No silk, no warning. Just a dark opening that might be empty and probably is. You develop a rhythm after a while. Approach, crouch, lift the rock slowly so you don't collapse the burrow. Shine your light inside, see nothing, move on, do it again and again and again. And your back hurts after a while, your water is running low, the doubt creeps in. Are we really at the right place? Have we studied our material correctly? But then, she was there, the whole time, waiting behind the door, we almost walked past. This is Brachypelma albiceps, the Mexican golden red rum tarantula. And the first thing you notice is that carapace. It's not a trick of the light. It's not the camera. The head of the spider is generally golden. A bright yellow gold that almost seems to glow against the dark soil. In juveniles, the color is paler, washed out. But in mature adults like this one, it burns. The rest of her tells a different story. The legs are pure black, bluish black when the sun hits them at the right angle. No bands, no rings, no orange markings like you had seen on her cousins. Just darkness from the femur down to the tarsi. And then there's the abdomen. At first glance, it looks black too, but look closer and you'll see them. The red hairs scattered through the black like ember buried in ash. That's where the red rum name comes from. But here's the strange thing. She's not actually a red rum at all. In 2020, Mendoza and Franke split the genus Brachypelma in two. The true red rums, like Vagans, Alopilosum, the curly hair relatives, were moved to a new genus called Tiltocatl. Different anatomy, different DNA, different spines on the legs. Albiceps stayed with the red knees. Smithy, Amori, Auratum. The name Golden Red Rump is a leftover from decades when nobody could figure out where this spider actually belonged. And the confusion ran deep. When Pocock first described her in 1903, she was Brachypelma. Then she got moved to Avanopelma and then in 1997, a German arachnologist named Schmidt described what he thought was a completely new species, Brachypelmides brunaui. Totally unexpected find, Brachypelma albiceps, a species we wanted to find on our first and second day, but now on day three, we were lucky enough to find it here. It's a juvenile specimen, they get quite, quite a lot bigger. Um, Maybe you will find one, maybe not. We'll see what the day will bring. But uh, super excited that we found this amazing specimen here, Brachypelma albiceps in its natural habitat here in Mexico. Beautiful. This is exactly the type of habitat in Rocky Palma and also Bonatino like to live in. 
because there is also an abundance of food. From specimens supposedly collected in Toluca, except no tarantula has ever been found anywhere near Toluca. The locality was almost certainly wrong, probably from the illegal pet trade where accurate collection data is the first thing to disappear. It took until 2005 for researchers to compare the specimens properly. Same urticating hairs, same spermathecae, same spider. Brachypelmine Zerunaui became a junior synonym and she was Brachypelma albiceps again. A hundred years of confusion, three genera, at least two names. And here she is, sitting at her burrow here in Guerrero, completely unaware that humans spent a century arguing about what to call her. So after we found our target species of Brachypelma albiceps, so we got ourselves a nice dinner with fresh tacos. But of course, after the dinner, we needed to drive into the night in search of more animals and this is a really special spider. Actually, it's not even a spider. They have their own order, Amblypigid, separate from spiders, separate from scorpions, separate from anything else you've probably encountered. They have no venom, they produce no silk. Those enormous pedipalps, blind with spines, are for grabbing prey aren't legs at all in the functional sense. Their sensory organs, antenna made of chitin, sweeping the darkness for information about what's moving nearby. And they've been doing this for over 300 million years. This is Acanthophrynus coronatus, an amplipigid. And despite what your instincts are screaming, it's not a spider at all. And then finally, another target species emerged from the wet forest floor, Brachypelma smithi. A tarantula wanted to see forever. And this was our first encounter. So, another tarantula on our list. Amazing. Brachypelma smithi, the real smithi. Just look at this beautiful spider. 